Hello and welcome to a video taking a look at the idea of uh, trial and improvement. In this video we are going to be taking a look at a GCSE question. Now the reason we're going to be taking a look at a GCSE style question is simply because this topic seems to come up on the GCSE Edexcel calculator paper year after year. And despite the fact that it comes up year after year, people still do not pick up full marks on this question. Now, the main reason that people don't pick up full marks on this question is this sentence at the end here, that you must show all of your work in. So let's take a look at the question. It says the equation x cubed plus 5x is equal to 62 has a solution between 3 and 4. Use a trial and improvement method to find this solution. Give your answer to one decimal place and then lastly that killer sentence you must show all your work in. Now if you get a correct value for x but you've shown no work in you get no marks. So as I said this is really the most important uh, sentence in, in the question. So let's take a look at what we need to do here. Now all that trial and improvement means it just means instead of solving an equation by using methods that we might have looked at before we, all that we're doing is putting numbers into the equation and seeing if they get close to our answer. So if I substitute a number in here and cube it and plus uh, 5 multiplied by that number, does it come close to the, to the answer? Okay. Now here we've been given a little bit of a guide. We've been told that the answer is going to be somewhere between 3 and 4. Okay. Now the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm just going to set up a table. This table helps me to show all of my work in and to show the person who's marking my paper that this guy knows what he's doing. So the first thing I'm going to do, this column here I'm going to label X. This label here I'm going to um, just call my answer or my work in. And then this bit here I'm going to have my comment. Okay, now we're told that the solution is between 3 and 4, so the answer is going to be somewhere between 3 and 4. So I'm just going to start by substituting those two numbers in first. So if I substitute 3 in and I substitute 4 in, it just lets me see um, is it going to be closer to 3 or is it going to be closer to 4. So let's, let's substitute 3 in first. So I'm going to substitute 3 into this equation and I'll have 3 cubed plus. 5 times 3. And what does that equal? Well, 3 cubed will be 27, plus 5 times 3 is 15, so 27 plus 15 gives me an answer of 42. So in this comment, comment box at the end, what could I say about this, my answer here? I could say that this is too small. So my answer to when it is 3 was it was too small, it's 20 too small. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to substitute the 4 in. So that gives me, uh, oops, sorry, be careful that you don't make silly mistakes like I just did there. So 4 cubed plus and then in brackets 5 times 4. So 4 cubed, that will give me uh, 64. Then plus 20, that will give me 84. So we can see here that this answer is too big. Okay. Now we knew that these were not going to be our answer because we were told that the answer was between 3 and 4, but it is a good starting point. Um, <clears throat> Now what we're going to do is, well, let's start honing in on our number. I would suggest that our numbers, it looks to be, it's going to be somewhere around the middle. So a nice place to start now might be to start by, by substituting in 3.5. So let's get our calculator out for this one. Um, so here's, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to substitute in, I've got 3.5 cubed plus... Uh, 5 times 
and that is equal to and let's just put that into our calculator so I've got 3.5 cubed uh, plus 5 times 3.5 and that gives me an answer of 60.4 so 60.4 that looks like a much better guess we're almost at 62 however it is still too small so the most logical thing to do now is to let's see what 3.6 would be let's see what 3.6 would be so I'm going to be doing 3.6 cubed plus 5 times 3.6 again just substituting that 3.6 into the equation that we've got at the top um, and let's see what that comes out on as our calculator so uh, let's change that to 3.6 and change this one to 3.6 <clears throat> and what do we get here now we we've got 64.656 so 60 64.7 we'll call that 64.7 and I can say that that is too big now what I can see here is that I've I've trapped my answer so I originally I knew that my answer was between 3 and 4 now I know that my answer is between 3.5 and 3.6 okay I only need to give my answer to one decimal place okay so I'm going to give my answer to either 3.5 or 3.6 but I don't know which one of these I'm going to choose next so the way in which I'm going to decide is I'm going to choose the number that is halfway in between those two so the number that is halfway between 3.5 and 3.6 is going to be 3.55. So now let's substitute that in to the equation at the top. 3.55 cubed plus 5 times 3.55. And let's see what that comes out as. Uh, so just putting that into the calculator. Um, And let's see what that comes out as. That comes out as 62.488875. So I'm going to call that 62.5. And still my answer is too big. Okay. Now you may be wondering, why have I done 3.55 when I only need to give my answer at one decimal place? Well, by doing this, it helps me to decide which of these to choose and it is an important stage in getting full marks on this question so what I could say is that here if I just draw out a quick number line and if I look I can say that this here is 3.5 this here is my 3.6 and then halfway along there is my 3.55 okay now I know, I know that 3.5 is too small I can say that 3.55 that was too big and 3.6 was also too big so because I can see that 3.6 was too big the number halfway between 3.5 and 3.6 was also too big that means that my answer must lie somewhere between 3.5 and 3.55 if my answer is in between 3.5 and 3.55 that means that my answer is going to be closer to 3.5 than it is going to be to 3.6 so my final answer here would be uh, 3.5 and that would be my final answer now let's very quickly as I said we're, we're doing this from a, the perspective of a GCSE question so let's talk about what we'd really get our marks for okay so we would get one mark for getting our correct answer provided that we had this kind of work in here we would get one mark for choosing um, for selecting a value of x between 3.5 and 3.6 then we would get 
two marks for this part here. So basically, um, for choosing a number between, uh, for choosing 3.5 and 3.6 and evaluating those correctly, that there would get us the, would get us two of those marks. So four marks in total, two for getting to this point where we have evaluated correctly two values between three and four, then um, a third mark for evaluating 3.55, and then a fourth mark for selecting the correct value.